Hello friends, uh, in this video we will be talking about LAC operon and we will be talking about the basic system of operon and the importance of operon uh, during the gene regulation process in prokaryotic cells. Now let us move on to the next slide. Okay. Now this is the concept of gene regulation normally as follows. Uh, let me take the color. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, if we think about the concept of gene regulation, uh, it means uh, in prokaryotic cell or eukaryotic cell, both type of cells, we need to regulate the expression of few stretch of genes and this expression is regulated by special regions inside uh, this DNA. Some of the regions are called promoter sequences where uh, the RNA polymerase come and bind and the transcription initiated and another place is called operator region and which operator another place is called a regulator region so this regulator operator and promoter are the sequences which are not coding for any protein but still they are very very important in uh, controlling the regulation and expression of fewer genes which are placed downstream of all these regions. Now in this case if we think about the lactose operon the actual or basic concept about the lactose operon is to produce uh, the gene products for uh, the beta lactamase, uh, uh, beta -lactamase uh, protein. Now this beta lactamase protein is a uh, sorry not beta lactamase beta galactosidase protein. Uh, so uh, the actual goal of all this uh, structural gene transcription is to produce the beta galactosidase protein. Now this beta galactosidase protein have a very important role in the lactose metabolism for this bacterial cell. Now this beta galactosidase uh, side is can cleave the beta galactoside linkage which is uh, formed between uh, the monomers of galactose which is a glucose and galactose now this glucose and galactose both are linked with each other with the help of this galactosidic linkage now beta galactosidic linkage now the enzyme beta galactosidase cleave this linkage and as a result it will generate the free glucose and galactose monomer okay so for uh, the bacterial cell to uptake lactose and to to degrade lactose into smaller subunit they need this beta galactosidase enzyme now and we and as we know the for the metabolism purpose to to produce atp uh, through the cellular respiration process and uh, the normal uh, uh, glycolysis and Krebs circle procedure to finally break down of sugar products we must produce uh, monosaccharides from polysaccharide or disaccharides now in this case lactose is a disaccharide so for uh, the sim for making it simple we must divide this lactose into galactose and glucose and this is established by the help of beta galactosidase in bacterial cells now in bacterial cells if we think about the uh, gene uh, arrangement now we can find this promoter and right after uh, right after that is that is operator now these two regions are the marked regions or the central regions which is controlling the replica uh, the transcription process but upstream of it we are having uh, the pi or the uh, promoter for inducer and another site which is the gene which produces the inhibitor promoter for inhibitor sorry now this gene is producing a product which is inhibitor of a whole uh, production of beta galactosidase now there is an inhibitor which is uh, acting as a negative regulator and there must be some effector molecule which uh, will act as the positive regulator of any kind of operon not only in case of lac operon but in lac operon we can see there are several type of proteins uh, which act as a positive regulator when they bind with the operator region or the regulator side they regulate uh, this transcription of the genes positive way and block the inhibitors uh, for binding with all this site but this lac inhibitor molecule if it is produced it will sit onto the operator site uh, of this genetic element and thus blocking the transcription of the structural genes which are placed further downstream of this promoter and operator site now in this case we can see there are structural genes called lac z lac y lac a now these genes are code coding for different proteins. Now LAC Z is the gene which is coding for beta galactosidase enzyme. LAC Y is the gene which is coding for the Parmese enzyme which is a protein molecule which, which is a um, transmembrane protein molecule as you can see in this picture this is the Parmese transmembrane protein which is, uh, res which is residing on the cell membrane and helping to uptake lactose from the external environment in, inside the cell and uh, there is another uh, gene which is LAC A which is also producing uh, 
another uh, enzyme which is called transacetylase uh, uh, we don't know the function of this enzyme yet but this is the enzyme called transacetylase which is coded by lac a okay so this is the setup of all this gene gene or genetic elements during this lac operon or or inside the uh, dna of e coli okay uh, though it is there are a lot of genes placed together but this is a simple short stage of dna segment now operon means uh, a set of genes which are regulated by a particular site then we call them operon system now in this case this is the operon because a lac z lac y and lac a gene transcription depends on a particular site region which is promoter and its operator okay now uh, the basic concept about this gene regulation just think uh, logically don't try to mug up all this thing just think log logically and you can understand it pretty fairly that uh, suppose you're a bacteria and you need to take lactose you need to break down lactose and produce glucose and galactose then you utilize this glucose and galactose to produce energy for your daily purpose that's the basic uh, uh, goal for you now if uh, there is a lot more lactose present in your environment then what you can do you can immediately take those lactose and break it down and produce glucose and galactose and produce energy out of it so it would be very good for you so when there is a lot more lactose so when there is a higher amount of lactose at the environment so higher amount of lactose at the environment you try to break it down so th you must produce higher amount of uh, you must produce higher amount of this beta galactosidase enzyme so you produce this beta galactoside in those environment because uh, there are a lot more uh, this lactose so you need to degrade them so you need beta galactosidase enzyme for doing it okay now uh, if there is less amount of lactose here so less amount of lac uh, lactose in inside uh, the environment so uh, it would be uh, it would be very very uh, dumb to produce this beta galactosidase enzyme in those situations because there are not enough substrate to act for acting on by this beta galactosidase enzyme so why creating this beta galactosidase enzyme where there is less amount of lactose because just simply it will be wastage of uh, energy it will be wastage of time and everything so for this situation cell usually do not produce this beta galactosidase enzyme so that is uh, the time for the regulation between these two steps so depending upon the presence or the concentration of lactose in, in your environment you must switch on the production of beta galactosidase or sometimes you must switch off the production of beta galactosidase okay if there is a higher amount of lactose then you must switch on the production of beta galactosidase when there is a low amount of uh, lactose you must switch off the uh, um, uh, production of beta galactosidase mm, and this is controlled by this lac operon system because lac operon is consisting of that promoter and operator and all this inhibitor proteins and all these things they can act and control this and the, it, this lack of energy is actually helping the bacterial cell to achieve the control system in between these regions okay so uh, we'll, we'll be seeing all these things in, in our future slides and how, how are they working we'll look at it now the beta galactoside is how it is working the beta galactoside is will work on to this lactose uh, structure uh, or the lactose or the beta galactoside linkage of uh, these two uh, glucose and galactose monomer then it will broke it down and change the construction of this uh, glucose and galactose into another construction which is uh, called the allolactose conformation now the difference between this lactose and allolactose conformation you can easily see in this picture is that in case of lactose the bond between galactose and glucose is one fourth but in case of allolactose the bond is shifted towards one sixth so one fourth bonding was uh, between galactose and glucose in case of uh, lac uh, lactose but when it is shipped one six it produces allolactose instead of lactose now this allolactose is pretty much vulnerable uh, to damage by this beta galactosidase okay now this beta galactosidase production will be controlled by the, this promoter and operator site and there are many proteins which are actually helping to regulate these processes proteins like catabolite activate and protein or cap cap or or cyclic amp which is a very good important precursor for this uh, for the controlling of this lac operon too we will be seeing all these things later but uh, now uh, let us go on to the next slide where we will we'll see the overall procedure of lac operon in an animation okay so let us move on okay one minute
Okay. Um. The LAC operon is a bacterial system for regulating genes that control the utilization of a disaccharide, lactose. The operon controls expression of genes for beta-galactosidase, which splits the disaccharide, permease, which transports lactose into the cell, and transacetylase. These structural genes are transcribed when RNA polymerase can bind the promoter controlling them. When there is no lactose in the cell's environment, it would be wasteful of the cell to make these proteins. The cell keeps the RNA polymerase binding site turned off. Let's see how. Upstream from the LAC operon is a regulatory gene, LAC-I, which encodes a repressor protein. The repressor tetramer is slowly but continuously produced by the cell. Now let's look at the control sequences, the promoter and operator, for the structural genes. The operator overlaps the promoter. If a repressor molecule is present, it can bind the LAC operator. It doesn't stick to the DNA like glue, but continually binds and releases, so the operator is not bound by the repressor at all times, and structural genes are transcribed at low, or basal, levels. When there is little lactose present, there is no reason to waste energy making the enzymes to process it. But what happens when there is a lot of lactose to process and the cell must use it as its carbon source? The repressor proteins have sites that bind lactose. Lactose binding causes a change in the shape of the repressor so that it can no longer bind the operator. Without competition for the promoter, RNA polymerase can repeatedly transcribe the structural genes and translation of the now abundant mRNAs makes the enzyme for processing lactose. The LAC operon is an inducible system, and lactose is its inducer. Okay. Now we have seen uh, the basic overview of the process. It will help us a lot. Many bacteria think. grow on glucose before they utilize other compounds okay. such as lactose. Before discussing uh, discussing this, uh, I must tell you, uh, in the previous video we have seen uh, the importance of uh, this LAC operon and how the LAC operon is being done. Now in this video what we will be studying, we will be studying the induction of the LAC operon or some amino acids uh, or some protein sequences rather which are actually helping us to achieve uh, this, uh, this induction during this operon. Now we have seen that uh, LAC I protein which is a repressor protein which is acting negatively uh, on, on uh, by uh, to block this repress, uh, block this uh, synthesis of beta galactosidase, but also in this case, uh, uh, that there are some proteins which are acting as positively re positive regulators uh, onto this uh, structural genes to to produce this beta galactosidase, and we'll we'll see this in this video. Any bacteria grow on glucose before they utilize other compounds such as lactose as a growth substrate when both are present in the medium. Transcription of the lactose operon is controlled by two regulatory proteins. The catabolite activator protein can bind to the activator binding site and facilitate transcription, and the lac repressor protein can bind to the operator site and block transcription. The catabolite activator protein can bind to the activator binding site only if cyclic AMP is bound to it. When glucose is present, the concentration of cyclic AMP in the cell is low. RNA polymerase cannot bind efficiently to the promoter and transcription does not occur unless the catabolite binding protein is bound to the activator binding site. Therefore, transcription of the LAC operon does not occur in the presence of glucose. In addition, if there is no lactose in the medium, the lac repressor binds to the operator site and this blocks transcription. When both glucose and lactose are present, there is insufficient cyclic AMP to bind to the catabolite activator protein, which therefore cannot bind to the activator binding site. Without the bound activator protein, RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter and initiate transcription even though lactose binds to the repressor and prevents it from binding to the operator site. When neither glucose nor lactose is present, the concentration of cyclic AMP is high and the catabolite activator protein is bound to the activator binding site. 
RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter, but it is blocked by the repressor on the operator site. When glucose is absent and lactose is present in the medium, cyclic AMP is present and binds to the catabolite activator protein, which in turn binds to the activator binding site and facilitates transcription. Lactose binds to the repressor and prevents it from binding to the operator site. RNA polymerase can now bind to the promoter and carry out transcription. Okay, we have seen this uh, pic uh, this animation. This is really beautiful, and uh, it states us very fairly what is going on in the presence uh, due to the presence of glucose or presence of uh, lactose. Now, the take-home message uh, above all uh, this uh, presentation is uh, is that uh, the cell will never utilize lactose un uh, unless they have a run out run out of glucose. That means if you have glucose and lactose both at, at the same time at a media then a bacterial cell will never trying to produce with beta galactosidase to broke down, break down lactose. Whenever they are having glucose they must uh, to take the glucose for their uh, energy generation purpose. That's the basic thing. So if you give them glucose and lactose unless and until and unless the glucose is finished they are not going to work on to this lactose to break it down right. So if there is glucose definitely they will take glucose but not the lactose. So they, the lactose operon will be switched off. But whenever they are having uh, uh, no glucose only in that situation so I am emphasizing it if there is no glucose uh, in that situations only uh, if the lactose is present they will uptake the lactose for their energy source okay so this is the take home message okay okay let's move on